Well, you know, there's a, a couple key things, uh, uh, and the answer is yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I think Ames is sort of the, uh, one of our roles in NASA is to be sort of the, not unique, but certainly kind of leading a lot of the entrepreneur efforts in the DPR. But there's a whole, there's a couple key parts of this. One of them is that, that, that NASA's predecessor agency, NACA, the National Advisory Committee of Aeronautics, was founded basically to help build an industry. And we still have that in our charter. Uh, this was the second NACA center, the first one being Langley, mm -hmm. in Virginia. And so that mission is still there. And uh, uh, it's now expanding to space and other areas. The second one, of course, is you know, we're embarked on the settlement of the solar system and the first steps of that. And that's going to have to be done with the private sector. I mean, the, the government isn't going to sustain human expansion into the universe. It's just, you know, historically governments never do that. They may be the pathfinders. That, and uh, but in this case, we're going to be uh, uh, doing that. So it is critical that NASA develop entrepreneurial opportunities and courage. Uh, of course, we can do that in a number of ways. One is the NACA way, where we provide technical back backing. We help people with ideas. We can have facilities. Uh, the second, we can be a customer. And uh, we're doing a lot of that now with the COTS program, the commercial orbital transport system. Uh, we're just starting a program that will be run out of here, is the, uh, that we will be buying suborbital flights on things like Virgin Galactic and, wow. and potentially Blue Origin and some of these other companies. Export, and uh, the idea is that uh, we'll buy scientists to ride into space, mm -hmm. and uh, along with their experiments, and they'll get five minutes of, of more weightlessness. So it's a uh, so we're going to also be a, a basic customer. So those two things are, are are going along quite well. The third area is really uh, very exciting, particularly for this center, is that traditionally NASA was was associated with the aerospace industry. And so, uh, and it's, although the aerospace industry is a, is a robust industry, it is not a big expansion. Okay, so <clears throat> the, the point is other industries are biotechnology, yeah. uh, IT, and so forth. Traditionally, those industries haven't played a big role in, in space, and space exploration, and space development. Uh, but we're sitting here in the, the most vibrant area in the world yeah. in that area. So, we work very hard to, to form linkages with these, these vibrant new entrepreneurial concerns, and we've been pretty successful working with Google. Uh, we'll soon sign a deal with Microsoft. Wow. Uh, the, uh, uh, the other thing is to be entrepreneurial in the sense of dealing with, with other government agencies. Yeah. And uh, this center also is, uh, it, it's always been kind of, in fact, one of my predecessors, Hans Mark, so this was always the uh, place of pirates and thieves. <coughs> and so uh, I, mean, I take it as a compliment, yeah. <laughs> as he called himself one. But this is a, this is a, a really looking at, at forming new kinds of partnerships and with new industries. Uh, the other one is with, like I said, the government. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have worked uh, very closely with uh, uh, local communities, cities, San Francisco, San Jose, Mountain View, and Sunnyvale, and other cities around the world even. To start looking, can we apply NASA data mm -hmm. to city problems, city planning wow. problems, particularly climate change cause problems? I mean, if the sea level rises, you know, NASA can tell you, predict how much we can make site specific climate predictions and so forth. So, across the board, this is, I think, uh, entrepreneurial spirit is, uh, is, is where NASA's going, and this center is kind of leading the way. I mean, it's not unique, but yeah. it's, it certainly is, uh, I would say, that. The, Majority of the entrepreneurial work is here. Uh, and again, it's because our employees sit in, in the entrepreneurial environment. Mm -hmm. You can't go to a local restaurant without some somebody telling you, uh, you know, they're talking at the next table about, you know, they've got this venture thing and they're doing that. Yeah. And so we're part of that. Yeah, that's amazing. Wow. Um, so, what's what's your ultimate dream for NASA in the future? <clears throat> well, there's kind of three things we do. I'm going to just. The first one, as I said, we're starting to settle the solar system. Uh, the dream there is to have a settlement on Mars. Yeah. Well, something can happen, certainly in your lifetime, maybe in mine. Uh, and that's uh, that's beginning. And I think that it'll be a privately developed settlement. So that is a is a key effort. Now, the other interesting thing about uh, settling the solar system is that uh, uh, 
Uh, this is going to give President Obama a real opportunity to lead. And, uh, you know, whereas the United States space is important, but it's not. I mean, the average person in the street doesn't really regard it as a big deal. But that NASA logo is a, is a, is a, is a brand that's known around the world. And like somebody told me that, you know, if you want to understand the, the level of it, try getting people to wear an IRS logo <coughs> in, in France, you know, that, that wear a NASA logo. The, uh, but uh, I just I had an experience with that uh, a few, about six, eight months ago, I was in South Korea for an IT conference. And it was a high-level IT conference sponsored by the, the, one of the, the key networks, yeah. uh, communications networks, mm -hmm. and entertainment networks in Korea. But uh, the first day I was escorted in and, and uh, up to the front table, they had kind of a bunch of tables in line. Uh, and I could tell it was a pretty high-level thing because they had some of the Redstone was sitting at the same table and you know, they yeah. had a Viacom. And so I said, was a, and at the end of the table I was a little Thing said president. I assumed it was the president of this company. Mm -hmm. Well, after about two three minutes, they start you know playing you know the, the South Korean national anthem and walks to the new president of Korea. And so <clears throat> he walked around the table, came to me, and said uh, that uh, he was delighted that NASA was here. And apparently, I had been the first senior NASA official to be in Korea for a long time. Wow. And he told me that uh, he was going to meet with our president soon, and they wanted to do a, work with us on space exploration, and he had signed an agreement. So the point is, I can imagine as President Obama goes around and meets these people, space is very much on their agenda. The Chinese want to work with us. Uh, China, India, and Japan are all at the moon now and, uh, uh, and with robotic uh, orbiters, and we launch ours pretty soon. But So that's the first area. The second one is really, this is a very exciting time for science. And uh, the last 10 years have seen NASA data revolutionize our understanding of physics. It's the most exciting time since Einstein and Heisenberg and the quantum mechanics, general relativity, it may be more exciting. And it's the reason it's exciting. Every new discovery shows we know less about the universe. You know, and we now sort of have this rather humbling view that, that we're only about a percent, you know, the matter we see is only about a percent of what's really there. So it's, uh, that's an exciting time to be a scientist. The next decade is going to be, I think, the decade of biological discoveries. Uh, we are on the verge of, of determining where and if life exists elsewhere in the universe. And that has fundamental implications for uh, biology, chemistry, physics, theology, philosophy. So it's, it's kind of a neat thing. So that's the second thing we do. <coughs> the third thing is really, we'll see a lot more. And this is where the entrepreneurial stuff is. And that's uh, starting to do more to directly impact the lives of people on Earth. And I'll give you two things that, that, that I see a lot of expansion in. One I, I mentioned, yeah. the ability to use NASA data, NASA predictive tools, NASA people to understand and help people cope with climate change. And uh, we're going to have to adapt. Uh, we're going to have to devise mitigating strategies. And that's where NASA you know, was really, I think, that picture we took coming back from the moon in the 60s, the first start of the environmental movement in some sense, that everybody said, hey, we're living on that little tiny blue dot in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And uh, there's nothing else around it, so we gotta, we're all riding the spaceship together. Yes. So that's important. And I think we're going to see a lot of that. The second area really is in aeronautics. And uh, the, uh, this last summer, I was at uh, uh, San Francisco Airport. And I had to fly to Cleveland. And the only airline that goes there, I, I shouldn't say bad things about them, but because they were delayed, I was continental. And so they're kind of over in what I call the third world airline part of San Francisco International. And it was, uh, it was where JetBlue and all the discount airlines are. And, uh, I, it was horrible. I was there delayed two, three hours, and there were kids screaming and you know, running around. And, and so I started thinking, wow, well, this would be really good when the price of JetBlue would go a little more, those kids won't be. <laughs> and I think, well, that's really the wrong answer. Yeah. Uh, it is the ability to travel that is bringing the world together, and I think ultimately eliminate problems like terrorism. Once you know other people and, and so forth. Uh, uh, when I grew up in Michigan, I didn't know anybody living in Michigan. Wow. Yeah. Well, now we're all not just across the country, but international. And I'm thinking, you know, our, one of my good friends over here at Carnegie Mellon University is he's a member of the Qatari royal family. He's married a Norwegian lady. 
and uh, you know they travel all over the world and to see their family. Yeah. So that's brought together the world. Around. And so we're going to have to have affordable, uh, carbon-free transport. Mm -hmm. And it's a uh, you know right now aviation only produces two percent of the greenhouse emissions, but when the whole world begins to travel like we do in, in the West and in the developed world, which they have to do, I think, uh, we're going to have to find different efforts. So there's going to be a lot of entrepreneurial stuff. We'll really return to our NACA roots and help people build green airplanes, electric airplanes, yeah. uh, biofuel, fuel, the more efficient different systems, even airships. Yeah. We've just started, we've got some entrepreneurial efforts here with an airship company. Yeah. And so, uh, so it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Um, a couple questions off of what you just said. Um, for Obama, you make a great connection yeah. that he's going to have this wonderful opportunity to really be yeah. because, like you said, all the things you spoke about will affect yeah. science and biology and so forth. So um, what do you think are going to be his top struggles in doing <coughs> so? Well, I mean, it's, you know, it it far be it for me to, you know, yeah. lecture the new president. I mean, he's, <laughs> a, uh, he's an impressive man. Yes. Yeah putting together an impressive team. Uh, I think from all of the statements, uh, NASA's going to play an important role in that. Uh, you know, there's rumors of who the administrator is going to be. You know, today it was different than it was yesterday, so we'll just see. Uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, I think we're going to play a, a critical role. The issue, of course, is that uh, it's money. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, is he going to put some of the stimulus package in NASA? I don't know. So, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a uh, uh, we've got a lot on our plate. Yeah. Those three things all require money, and uh, so far it's been a zero-sum game. We've got to kind of balance between the human exploration, the science, and yeah. the things that directly relate to people's life on Earth. So uh, uh, that's a challenge, I think, is uh, providing enough resources. Uh, you know, we, we can get a lot more detailed challenges, like you know. As we phase out the shuttle, it will be some number of years before there's a government system to take us to the space station. Mm -hmm. However, I think that's what the private sector is really going to be. You know, there are, we just chose two companies to, that were willing to buy tickets in cargo services rather than actually have government. That's exactly what we're going to do, and I think the new president's going to really support them. Wow. Um, and going back to uh, how you mentioned the airship ventures. Yep. Have you partnered with anyone similar to how you partnered with Airship Ventures? And also, um, what has been the value back to NASA as well? Because I can imagine they could have a lot for them, but they probably benefit NASA as well. Well, we, we're, we're executing a program for the Department of Defense uh, with a company in Southern California to, looking at building heavy ship, uh, heavy lift airships. Uh, that's just beginning. Uh, with Airship Ventures, in addition to having them here, we are uh, we're going to uh, using uh, their platform to do earth science. And, uh, it's an ideal platform because it's slow and it's, you can carry very stable yeah. instrument platform. So uh, there'll be a lot of benefits from them. Uh, the, uh, uh, we're also working with uh, a couple other folks doing uh, uh, unmanned aerial vehicle development, uh, another major area, as well as uh, uh, there's Folks developing wind power and solar power, so we're, we're signing agreements. So we're, we've got quite a few things in the pipe. Yeah, awesome. Um, and you spoke a little bit about how um, living or being located in the hub of entrepreneurship, right. not only on the West Coast but on, of the right. world. Um, you mentioned a little bit about how it's benefited NASA, but also how do you think? Describe the relationship, basically. And um, also, do you serve on any, um, <coughs> what, what else are you involved in personally besides NASA? Well, there's a, uh, you know, we're uh, really involved very heavily with the community. Uh, I'm a member of the, uh, of the uh, uh, Silicon Valley Leadership Group, which is a group of CEOs that meets uh, periodically, and uh, that's a very active group. Uh, the, uh, in addition, I've just been named as a member of the California Council on Science and Technology, which is a very prestigious group that advises the state and the governor. Uh, it's chartered much as the National Academy of Sciences is for the U.S. Uh, so we're you know, working with them uh, quite uh, avidly. Uh, you know, I'm a uh, we're involved with the Competitiveness Council, the U.S. Competitiveness Council. Uh, so 
quite a few of these things. Uh, uh, one of the new things that we're doing is uh, setting up uh, a uh, what's called a singularity university. I don't know if you're familiar with the singularity yeah, concept. Yeah. Uh, in fact, there's a meeting today. Uh, the first session of that will be this summer. It will be run like the International Space University, which is international, interdisciplinary, intercultural, uh, to bring young entrepreneurs together and so they can begin to do interdisciplinary efforts. Uh, that will be based here. So we're, and I, I'm, a, I'm the official liaison with that, as well as the official liaison for NASA and International Space University, which has its summer session here this summer. That's their headquarters. In so, <coughs> quite a few things. Yeah. It keeps me off the streets. No. <laughs> um, so, so, how do you think the entrepreneurial culture um, at uh, NASA Ames differs with other NASA centers? Well, I mean, uh, in all, NASA is pretty entrepreneurial. Yeah. I, mean, it, it's, uh, I, I think here is uh, there's two things. One is this center, more than the others, does a little bit of everything NASA does. Uh, we're kind of evenly divided between those three areas I mentioned, whereas other centers tend to be more focused on the JPL and yeah. Goddard on science, Marshall, uh, Kennedy, and Johnson on manned spaceflight. Uh, the the other two research centers, the major centers, uh, Glenn and Langley, are more in the aeronautics. Although so they're beginning to get more like we are. So it, it's first of all, it's 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 the it's a microcosm of all of NASA more than any, any other center. I think is. But second is just uh, you know the we live in an entrepreneurial part of the world and uh, the the employees here are uh, uh, free spirits I think more than anyone else. And in fact, somebody said when I got here that Ames, unlike the rest of the centers, it's a, that Ames regarded a, a headquarters decision as an invitation to argue. <laughs> so you know there's uh, yeah. there's both good and bad things. Yeah. But, uh, I think our folks are more inclined to come up with. Wild new ideas. Yeah. They're also more inclined, inclined to be difficult to manage. So if there's a bit of a cat herding problem, uh, and of course I'm the chief cat. <laughs> I think. So I, I've been told by headquarters that you know uh, that I'm the appropriate person out here because I'm just as bad as my employees. So, <laughs> but uh, but it's you know it's kind of yeah like, yeah. So um, actually going off what you said about your employees thinking really big, um, I would imagine that in all the centers you have to have big thinkers sure. with great visions. Um, going off of as far back as Kennedy's dream for us and um, how do you, how do you think how do you personally help uh, inspire your employees and open up possibilities for them and what do you think <coughs> is good advice for others who look to do the same well there's, there's sort of two things one or a couple things one is I can create an, an entrepreneurial environment yeah. where people can feel free and even rewarded by coming forward uh, second of course is in addition to having come forward is to find resources for yeah. them and I have a very modest investment account here, so we try to spread it as far as we can. The third is to be an advocate. I mean, it's uh, a lot of the money is coming from other agencies and the private sector. So, you know, I've formed good relationships with the senior leadership at Google and some of those other places. So, you know, if we see a good idea, I can call over there and, yeah. and tell Eric Schmidt or Larry or Sergey that, hey, here's something to look at. And in some cases, they, yeah, that's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. and picked it up, so. So there's a, a uh, it's to be kind of a, a, uh, an agent. Yeah. And finally, I can shield them from bureaucratic, you know, fuss. And uh, now, you probably if you ask the average employee, they'd say, he hasn't shielded us at all, he's inflicted it on us. But, <coughs> you know, they don't see all the things they didn't yeah. get asked to do exactly. that, you know, I've complained about and said, no, you know, I don't need to fill out six more forms for, to get a pencil. <laughs> and uh, uh, so that's, you know, it, it, it again is, is a, uh, you know, somebody that has got an entrepreneurial idea doesn't want to have to worry about, mm -hmm. you, know, the, you know, your new security training. Yeah. You know, so, uh, some cases, you know, we are a federal government agency and, and the U.S. is under uh, a lot of you know, IP threats, security issues, as well as physical threats. I mean, we, uh, Without getting into detail, we've had some problems here with, with physical threats. Wow. We are the largest kind of government entity in the Bay Area now, and uh, you know it's uh, it's pretty visible, the big hangars and everything. So yeah. it's uh, uh, 
Yeah. So I have to worry about a lot about physical security and the, uh, and that means people got to worry about badges and, and you know, they, they, they hate these things and they're, you know, the new procedures and yeah. so on. Of course. Um, just two last questions. Um, I, I was wondering, as you were growing up, um, did you have any type of a, a mentor that um, that helped you all the way, or various mentors? Um? Quite a few, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, my parents, uh, to start with. Uh, uh, my mother passed away when I was 14, but she was very supportive. I was an only child, so. But my dad has always been very supportive. And then in uh, in uh, college and, and beyond, I've always had folks that uh, have been extremely supportive. In fact. Mm -hmm. One of my key mentors, and I'm really honored to sit in his seat, is uh, the third director, Hans Mark. Uh, he was uh, the uh, very distinguished career. He, uh, when I first met him, he was Secretary of the Air Force. He'd mm -hmm. gone from here to be the, the head of the Air Force. And uh, I was just a captain. And uh, he immediately, you know, he liked young military officers with PhDs, and he wanted to push that. So he has long helped shield me from a lot of garbage. And, and uh, he later became the deputy uh, NASA administrator, uh, chancellor of the University of Texas, director of defense research and engineering. So again, a very distinguished career. Uh, another guy that helped me a lot was uh, General Schriever, who was the father of the Air Force Space Program. And uh, was, uh, uh, he just passed away a couple years ago in his 90s. But, uh, and Edward Teller uh, was another mentor. So there are a lot of these folks that, that you'll find that uh, you know, and, and there's always people, I and mean, these were all characters, and, you know, and they're controversial. Uh, you know, Edward Teller is a perfect example. I mean, everybody hates him. He was father of the hydrogen bomb. And, but, you know, he became a very good friend and, and supporter. So there's been a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of folks of that, uh, that helped me a lot. Uh, Going along with that question real quick, um, between, like, the kind of the military career and and I asked about the mentorship because. Um, well, well, let me add something on mentors. Yeah. You know, you know, I mentioned a bunch of very senior people. Yeah. There's also a, there are two other set of mentors in the One is your colleagues. Yeah. And you have to find colleagues that are uh, uh, honest with you. And so they're mentors too. In fact, I, you know, there's a number. You know, of all people I count as my best friends because they tell you, you know that. They see you at your level from you know, the outside. It's not just somebody that's, you know, the grand poobah of the universe yeah. looks down, but they look at you sideways. And then even more important, I think, is to have mentors in a sense that are people coming up. I, I tend to pride myself in doing a lot with young people. You know, I had a much more house last night. Really? If I had gone to bed earlier, I wouldn't have got, <laughs> wouldn't have had a relapse. Or a, Whole, but, but it's uh, you know, and, and that's a important too because they see you from the bottom up, and uh, it's important to get them to honestly tell you, you know, hey boss, uh, you know, that speech really wasn't very good, you couldn't <laughs> see very well. <clears throat> so I, I think, it, in fact, there's kind of a it's a little bit of an off-color comment that I, uh, when I was a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force, I, I remember hearing a shouting match between one of the other lieutenant colonels and the colonel. Mm -hmm. And he said, Colonel, you don't understand. This organization is, uh, in fact, the entire Air Force is like a tree full of monkeys. So if you're on the top looking down, all you see is smiling faces. So if you're on the bottom looking up, all you see is assholes. Oh. <laughs> so, so it's important to get the perspective of those that, that see the other parts of the, yeah. of the tree. And it, uh, so it, uh, I guess I can't overemphasize that, that you need to understand that, in some sense, to have mentors that are your peers and your subordinates, mm -hmm. because you know they can give you as useful advice as as the person who was the you know, secretary of defense. Or something. Yeah. So um, talking about um, the mentors you mentioned first, um, the ones that are, I guess you're there from looking up from above. For young people, do you have any advice for how to seek out those mentors and to keep them and make a good relationship? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, usually you'll find, especially senior people, regard, you know, I mean, the most important thing for somebody like me to do is replace myself. Yeah. And they're usually eager to find, and a lot of people are a little hesitant, but, you know, don't be hesitant. Don't yeah. knock on the, and, and don't be upset if the person says, look, I, I don't have time today, but come back next week or next month. 
but if it's somebody worthy of being a mentor, then they'll make time for it. And but the, but again, the second one is uh, you know find a circle of friends and subordinates that are honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's and it's really hard to do that because particularly a subordinate is going to oh boss you're great you know that's the nicest suit I've ever seen you know. Uh, well, that was the best speech, and so you, you got to kind of make sure that the, the flattery is, you know, if it's deserved, and you tend to know whether it is, fine. But it, it needs to be somebody that says, you know, that really wasn't yeah. didn't get received very well, and it doesn't mean that they hate you, or, uh, and it's you, you got to really force yourself to find those uh, folks that are critical. Yeah. But they're still friends. I mean, you know, if, if, if somebody's always critical, I mean, it, yeah. you know, it, it's not fun to be around, but it's. Yeah, people are. Yeah. Um, so my last question um, has to do with the the reason why I want right. to uh, videotape this as well. But um, I have a, a blog that I share with um, probably about like a, a thousand like, right. young entrepreneurs, and so everything we've said up to this point has been amazing, and it'll be really helpful. Do you have any um, closing advice for young people who are very interested in entrepreneurship and maybe taking what you've talked about? with um, space exploration and NASA's role, like just applying it to the general and entrepreneur? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, NASA is, uh, don't be afraid to think big. Yeah. And, uh, and also, don't be afraid to fail. And uh, everybody I've seen that's, you know, I see a lot of entrepreneurs that, uh, you know, there's an old saying, you got to kiss a lot of frogs before you find friends. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'd even carry that a little further and say that, you got to kiss a lot of frogs before they change in anything. And quite often, they just change you with a toad. <coughs> so, you know, there may be a lot more kissing yeah. before the, the, you find the, the, the prince. But it's just never give up. Yeah. And uh, good humor. Yeah. And uh, uh, have fun. You know, it's a, this is the most fun job I've ever had. And uh, the, uh, if you're having fun, the, uh, you'll succeed. So. Yeah.